Hey up folks, <laughs> and a warm, 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 warm welcome to today's show, which is a show 104, nice one. Right, we've got Justin on the show, we've got Ricky the Riddler on the show, we've got two great guests as usual on the show, so without further ado, it's on with the show, if that makes sense. He, oh, before, I've got to tell you something, right? <laughs> did an experiment yesterday. I did an experiment yesterday, right? I've got a racing snow, right? I've got a racing snow, and I decided to take his shell off, assuming it would go faster, right? But instead, it just made it more sluggish. Hey. Right off, right after three, right, right after three, ready, one, two, three, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going to the end, keep on going to the end of the show, my friend, boo, boo, see you later folks and enjoy the show, hey. Hi folks, hope you're doing very well wherever you are, bonjour, au revoir, hello. <laughs> Let's try and make this a virus of laughter that goes all around the world. Me and Justin, this show started off as a tiny little snowball going down a hill, and now it's getting bigger and bigger. And this is what we do with your help as well. If you can pass it on, get other people to watch us, share us, like us, and uh, pass it on. And um, let's get a virus going of happiness rather than a virus of sadness and hate and everything. Let's get rid of that, and let's, you know, let's beat this together. Right, here we go. This is called The Pain When You're Young. I wrote this and uh, it's about all the feelings I had when I was young and I never thought, I thought I was stupid. Um, that was the thing because I couldn't get a grasp. Because I was dyslexic, um, I, I thought that was me, I was stupid. And my mum and dad fought for me long and hard to not send me to schools where uh, they thought it would be no good and they tried to keep me in a normal school and they did that and then I went and had special lessons I've had lessons myself and I've left school so I've tried to improve myself all the way through and I've tried to understand it and I've been on uh, dyslexic courses which lasted with me a long uh, year and a half I told you and um, so you can do stuff you just got to keep searching and keep wanting to know and try and you know, trying to make yourself happy, and um, I filter stuff out now and by doing comedy and stuff, so here we go anyway. This is called The Pain When You're Young. Thought I had a problem. Thought it was me. That John Lewis is a bit slow, you see. He can't get a grasp of mass. His spelling is no good. And all the schooling in the world would do that boy no good. He's a nice enough lad, he's honest and polite, and all the teachers I spoke to said that he's a delight to have in their class. He tries so hard, but most of the lessons he finds too hard. When I was at school, this was me, back of the class, hidden away, trying not to be seen for most of the day. Please don't ask me a question. I don't know what to say. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare in every way. Suffered a lot when I was small. I was different and I knew why. Being dyslexic used to really make me cry. When you're a child, you can't relax. Trying so hard to go that extra yard. Felt so sad in every way. Had to face my demons every day. When I look back now, it seems a miracle to me how I kept my sanity. I'm sitting in a pub writing this down. Can't believe what I've found. This pain inside, this pain inside me is finally coming out, letting go where it should be, anywhere else, except inside of me. Right, folks, enjoy the rest of the show, and uh, we'll have something funny for you later, I'm sure. <laughs> Bye for now, and um, love you all. Peace to you all. Spread the word. Hi, yeah. My name is Ted, and I'm a taxi driver. I'm a taxi driver 
in London and I drive my taxi in London. I like my job as a taxi driver. I've been doing it for 35 years now. So, you know, I know my way around, as they say. <laughs> and uh, that was a taxi driver's joke. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, right? You know, most jobs, they say, go the extra mile, don't they? Go the extra mile. Well, if you're a taxi driver, that ain't a good idea. No, it's not. Anyway, I've got a mate who lives in Dublin, right? I've got a mate who lives in Dublin. He's from Dublin. He was born in Dublin. And he's actually a taxi driver as well. Well, once a year, we meet up. We go to uh, Benidorm. Uh, we, you know, I'm Bifa. We go to Greece. We, we've been to Turkey once. We go all over the place. We get set as we are. We have a week, you know. We sit there, drink beer, and uh, and uh, just sit on the beach. And uh, it's nice. But um, the other day, he said to me, guess who I had in my taxi? I, I said, I don't know. Who do you have in your taxi? He said, I had David Beckman. David Beckman got into his taxi, right? He got into his taxi. And um, I said, oh, yeah. So anyway, he said, David Beck was in the taxi. And I was in the taxi, of course, because I'm a taxi driver. I said, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And um, he said, we just sat there looking at each other. For about five minutes, I was looking at him in the uh, rear, school, sh rear screen mirror and uh, David Beckham was starting to get a little anxious. You could see he was looking at me, getting a bit anxious. So after about five minutes, uh, my mate, uh, he said to uh, David Beckham, he said, uh, he said, well, give me a clue then, give me a clue. So David Beckham shrugged his shoulders, you know, very blase as David Beckham is, shrugged his shoulders and he, and he said, oh, he said, look, he said, I played, he played, I played, I've had a fantastic career, brilliant career for Manchester United, right? I played over a hundred times for my country, England, right? And I married a Spice Girl. Do you get it yet? Is that enough? And my mate said, no, you spanner, you cabbage. Oh, dear. He said, and then he called him a flute as well. He called David Beckham a flute. He said, no, you flute. He said, where are you going? Should have just told him, shouldn't he, when he got in the cab. He, anyway, I'm out of here now. I've got to go and earn a living. I'll see you later. This has been Ted, the taxi driver. Bye for now. It's been an absolute pleasure. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Bye for now. Ooh. <laughs> Joe La Taxi, but I'm not on Ted La Taxi. <laughs> Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler is in the house. Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler is definitely in the house. How you doing folks? Hope you're doing very well. Oh, here we go and I'm in a different setting again. <laughs> oh dear, right, here we go. Right, we've got a winner, so that's fantastic and I'll tell you it is in just a second. Right. Yesterday's riddle was, open your now goals up, here we go, one, two, three. What gets bigger when more is taken away? What gets bigger when more is taken away? And the answer, of course, is a hole. You dig a hole and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger when you're taking stuff away. And me and Justin were just saying the other day, we got an Eng a winner from England, we got a winner from Scotland, we got a winner from Ireland, but we've not had anybody from Wales. Well, we have now, so that's fantastic. The gentleman who's won today, his name is Craig Smith, and he is from Wales. So, well done, Mr. Craig Smith. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Well pleased. And you'll be getting your 
print photo, your print drawing from Mr. Lewis, and also a signed picture from me as well, a <laughs> drawing from me. So hope you enjoy it. You can stick it on your local dartboard and throw things if you want, or you can put it on your wall, whatever you want to do with it. Right, today's riddle. Open up your lug holes. Here we go. What invention lets you look right through a wall? What invention lets you look right through a wall? And of course, you'll see me like that later to have a bit more time to have a, get the old noggin working. Right, off I go. Remember, keep smiling, keep happy, keep giggling, and of course, keep on riddling. And before I go, what did Daddy Farfly say to Mummy Farfly? I'm very proud of our son. He's very bright for his age. <laughs> Right after three, one, two, three, here we go. Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler is leaving the house. Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler, Ricky the Riddler has definitely left the house. Cuckoo, 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 woo! Kapow! Ooh! <laughs> kapow, kapow, kapow! Do hope you've enjoyed show 104, that's the end for today. Right, great show, uh, Justin as usual, Ricky Lou Riddler, many thanks, John Lewis, and also Ted the Taxi Driver. Boop, boop. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, how do you find, how do you find Will Smith in the snow? How do you find Will Smith in the snow? You look for the Fresh Prince, of course. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> See you tomorrow for show 105. Here we go. <laughs> This is the end of show 104, I'm going to close and walk out the door, because it's a show, end of show 104, <laughs> And of course, a great big cheery bye, cheery bye, cheery bye from myself, Mr. Yorkie, and Justin Garren. We'll see you tomorrow for another show, which will be show 105. Bing, 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 bong, bing, bing, bong. Bing, 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 bong. Bong, bong, bing, bong.